No. Well, hopefully we don't have to use that. Okay. Just smooth the teeth. Okay, okay. At least we have smooth all this. So I think it was about two or three days before launch. We decided we're gonna get all the skins on today. We're gonna have everything fitted, and we're gonna be ready to go a couple days in advance before we do launch. That's fine. All right, it's only gonna deflect more once it's raised. It'll probably lean off. Okay. Uh, are you gonna be able to get the panel? You guys are pulled in one spot. This is as hard as possible. After you permanently mount the rib nuts, sometimes they, they rotate and it's hard to get the panels in. All the mounting points that we had on our rocket did not line up very well and a lot of small changes were made to the system, um, like as far as um, plumbing orientations. Ready? Hi. Yeah, I don't see why not. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, it's all right. We have to pick up the LNG doer from the the launch site and tow that back to uh, the fill station, which is just north of Riverside. So it's a, like a three hour, three and a half hour drive. And yeah, so there's a fill procedure that FAR gave us. And then there's a fill procedure that comes from the people who run clean energy that like run the LNG company. And we were really optimistic. We got it to work last time. We followed procedures, it should work this time. And then all of a sudden we just hear like, <laughs> like, like if you just took a horn and like dipped it in the depths of hell and like pulled it out, like it was the gnarliest sound. And we're like, Michael has no idea what's happening. So like his immediate reaction is like, we're all gonna die. Like, and he, he literally just runs away. Every time that it shuts down because there's like too much pressure built up in the doer or whatever, it just will reject that card afterwards. As far as we know, indefinitely. Yeah. And this was the last card we had. And I, <laughs> we put it in, it worked perfectly. We are loading his emergency card. Billy, I'm sorry. You're the best though, you're saving this launch. You're so I happy, can't man. even describe <laughs> what that felt like. Like, it really, we, we were both convinced <laughs> that this was just not gonna happen. But we realized when we get back, like we're not sleeping. Like by the time we get back, it's gonna be like seven and everyone else is already gonna be awake and I fell asleep in the car and they're like, wake up all groggy and we're just totally lost, like in the middle of the desert. And I'm like looking out the window, half awake, watching the doer like bouncing up and down in the trailer while it's people like rips through the desert. Yeah. But you know, we made it, we didn't blow up. Alright, QD in three, two, one. That's all yeah, good shit. Alright, let's go. Everyone be quiet. Everyone Shut be quiet. Up. Be quiet. Alright. Listen through. Yeah. Alright, and everyone, when, as soon as it goes up, we still have to be quiet. Alright, UCI is countdown commencing. The T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ignition.
guess you shoot. A lot of range. Yeah, is there a shoot? Yeah, have a good shoot. Main shoot? There's a little bit under. There's about can four I separate come pieces. Come out and look. Okay. Can you I look come here? out? Yeah. It was awesome. It was awesome. It was great to watch it uh, overall, and uh, if, if I had the chance to do it all over again, I would I would do it with my eyes closed. Like, during that countdown, all that was running through my head is like, is all that gonna be for nothing? <laughs> like, is it all just not gonna be like, is it just gonna fizzle out on the test stand? Even after everything, we were able to get it up off the ground, and we had uh, 14 seconds of burn time, which is actually double the amount that we got at BTF, where it was also on the test stand. Cut the fill time down to about four minutes per tank, and got them completely filled to where we were able to achieve 14 seconds of burn time, which was actually ideal and a perfect world. So. Yeah, the, the side panels are good. Oh, yeah. I think we have side panels coming down. Nice and positive. Oh my God, it's so hot. About probably like 10 of us walked out into the desert, roughly in the direction Rick told us, and we spread out so we weren't just going in one direction, trying to use all the people we have. Everyone was really excited because we found the one skin panel that we all signed the interior of, and we all got to take a picture with that, which was really cool. That was the one that had the UCI Rocket Project logo on it. And then, yeah, we didn't really know where the rocket was. That was Saturday, Monday, our ops lead Kyle uploaded all of his drone footage. Then, you know, I was looking at the last video he uploaded, and right at the 15 second mark, you see this very quick plume of dust just come out of nowhere in the desert. And I wasn't really sure. I sent a screenshot over to Kyle and Kyle's like, that's gotta be it. But that whole week it was driving me crazy. So I decided, why don't we just go this weekend? The weekend right after lunch. So me, Michael, Kyle, and the Tish, we drive up in my car, put Kyle's drone up, Kyle scans the area, can't see anything. So we decided to start walking. And all of a sudden our phones start ringing and we pick up the phone and it turns out they found the camera. They found our camera mount that me and Kyle built together and we found the camera in it. And that was, that was just amazing. That was just, I mean, that was the last thing we thought we would have found. We did not, I mean, Kyle thought he was gonna find this thing, but I had no faith that we would find this thing, but uh, I'm very glad we found it. And so then we decided to go back to the car. We look at the footage. So basically what happened to the rocket was, you know, as it reached Apogee, eventually the chutes deploy. It takes some time for the chutes to, to deploy. And that's when you see the chute start to inflate a little bit and then the rocket does this swing maneuver and it rapidly just swings over the whole parachute just throws the rocket over i mean then the camera just goes crazy the camera's off skin panels are flying off the whole rocket you just see descend below down to the desert so in that moment when we're in the desert in my car looking at this footage we're like damn it, it must be in intact pretty intact you know we had all agreed okay we're gonna leave here at 4 30. and so we started there flew the drone around moved to the halfway point flew the drone around again and then got a little closer to far, flew the drone around again to see if we could see anything and just record videos so we could look back at it later because we really didn't think we'd find it. We walk out into the desert, we all start spreading out and then walking towards the road. And we're walking and we're all thinking, you know, like, damn, like, it's the end of the day. I can't believe we didn't find it. Like, man, we should have had more people out with us. Like, we, we only had four people. Like, what are we doing? Like, this is, this is crazy. You know, all of us had probably only eaten one protein bar. Then, you know, we're walking and and then Kyle calls me and Kyle's like, Alec, like, look to your right. There's like some like metal cylinder like over there. That was the whole rocket right there. I start sprinting towards that thing. I see the tanks and everything. That thing is so tight. Let's go. Let's go. And the rocket's just beautifully like sitting there. There's no impact or anything. It looks like someone laid it there. You know, I worked on the fins. So of course I was just astonished to see that there was two fins on the rocket. But everyone's like, you know, where's the other fin? And the other fin is literally stab deep into the ground pull it out and the whole fin is intact so all the fins are intact the whole propulsion system's intact the engine's intact basically the majority of the rocket is intact after it fell from nearly over 9,000 feet which was amazing it was almost better than the day of launch because so much work had gone into that rocket and it was just amazing Boys, I move through the lobby. Six on twelve, the flame been hot just to show you the time frame. Hundred mil down on my desk, but I'm still up deciding. Match your ends in my account to the truck in my driveway. I'm in that photo by myself.